Hello, welcome to the Tuesday, September 11th, 2018 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. It's always great if we get malware samples from readers and listeners. The latest one we got wasn't so far remarkable in that the reader noticed that the PowerShell script that sort of started it all did search for two very specific strings. These two strings, Dicona and Clyrode 3, were used to extract malware from a link file. Now, the way this worked is that the attacker used the find string command. That's essentially your crep for Windows. And then the link file included additional data at the end of the proper link file that then turned out to be the malware after it was extracted using the find string command. It appears that this trick does fool some anti-malware because it only scans the proper link file and nothing then beyond the end of this file or what it considers the end of the file. And we have another reason why blacklists don't work. Apparently, the Tor browser, which still includes the old-style NoScript plugin, can be tricked into executing arbitrary JavaScript just by using a somewhat malformed content type header. If you're using text slash HTML semicolon slash JSON, then JavaScript is being executed even if no script is in its strict security setting that's supposed to prevent any JavaScript from running. This only worked in the old Tor Browser 7, not in the current version Tor Browser 8. And with auto-update, you're probably not going to get exposed to the old version of Tor Browser. I think it was yesterday that I talked about Adware Doctor, which was somewhat suspect software that was removed from the App Store after it turned out that it leaked users' browser history. Well, turns out that Adware Doctor wasn't alone, and that shouldn't really be a big surprise, but may come as a surprise that also brand name antivirus vendors, in this case Trend Micro, did follow similar practices. Now, there is a number of applications that Trend Micro had published in the Apple App Store for Mac OS and OS X. Those applications, in part, did, for example, take over some extensions, but they also exfiltrated browser history and other user data to Trend Micro. These applications have now been removed from the App Store. Not really clear whether this happened because Trend Micro felt that they should shouldn't be there or whether Apple removed them after user complaints. And the latest version of Google Chrome included a new feature that may actually lead to some social engineering security issues. Chrome will no longer display what it considers trivial subdomain names. So instead of www.example.com, you'll just see example.com. Other Trivial subdomains are, for example, the letter M, which is often used for mobile websites. The problem here, of course, is that the URL bar is one way how a user can tell that they are on the correct site or not. An attacker, for example, may be able to register M at a certain domain and then use it to impersonate the main www website. This is of course particular critical for companies that do allow users to set up their own websites and just distinguishing them using a subdomain. Of course, browsers recently have often removed space from the URL bar and assigned it to the search bar. For example, Safari no longer shows details about the URL, just the domain name by default. And on some mobile browsers, again, for example, Safari, the URL bar is often pushed off the page to provide more real estate for the actual page. Well, and that's it for today. So thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.